Introductions. My name is Martin Hale. I'm CEO of IT Masters, who um, who helps develop and, and promote these courses with Charles Sturt University, and I'm also an adjunct lecturer at Charles Sturt University. Uh, we're also going to have John Vines drop in. Uh, he's been held up, uh, so he may or may not, but I can cover his area anyway. He's from the Australian Graduate School of Policing and Security, a massive area at Charles Sturt University that looks after uh, New South Wales police intake and um, a whole range of other uh, policing uh, courses. And we've also got, last but not least, we've got Neil and Holly hiding in the background, not hiding, um, they're actually there to help answer your questions. And I'd, I'd be very nice to Neil because he's actually going to decide who wins the wine pack so, um, at the end of the webinar. Agenda. Pretty standard. We've been running these webinars for a number of years, so we've got a pretty good idea of what people want to cover. Let's start with the target audience as per the agenda there. So the first one, the master of cybersecurity, <coughs> the prime audience, and I mean prime because you get people come from all over, but it's really network and um, sysadmins, network support people. They are the common uh, entry, if you like, into cybersecurity. Because what happens when you're in a role of sysadmin, you've got to do lots of security stuff. Um, people get more and more adept at it and understanding, and then they decide to move on and specialise in it. Now, have a look at some of the stats later on about the growth in the cybersecurity industry and what's coming, particularly, and that would, looks like an excellent um, career path for people. But the last prize winner from last year in one of the cybersecurity didn't have a back that background. They actually just had a strong personal interest in IT, so it is still possible um, if to do that masters if you don't have a, um, a background, a formal background or work background in IT. But I would warn you there, you're gonna to have to work your butt off. There is a fair bit of assumed knowledge that you understand how computer networks are structured. Um, and the roles you've heard all these is lots of um, New roles as a, uh, the industry is just expanding so quickly, lots of new roles appearing. Um, intrusion detection specialists, uh, a common one you hear a lot about is the penetration tester. They'll come and test your network for you. You pay them as a company often or individual and they'll come and attack your network. And if they get in, uh, then they'll um, tell you how to stop uh, or to fill up that weaknesses. And the second one, which is different, but also you'll see there's quite a bit of commonality, Master of Cyber Studies and Investigation. And this is uh, brought to you by the School of Policing from, from CSU. And the target audience is those working in law enforcement with a strong interest in IT, and also those working in IT but wanting to work in law enforcement agents, but not policing it. You really have to come through the ranks in policing they won't just grab someone from outside with no policing experience, but certainly uh, lots of the government agencies are employing people. And as you'll see again, in the numbers, we've got lots more people to come uh, from outside of policing. So just a caveat here, if you're interested in cyber security management, you know, you, you, um, you want to move to the dark side, management instead of actually doing, uh, like a CISO, for instance, uh, Chief Information Systems Security Officer. These courses are not really designed for you. We've got a Master of IS Security, which is very, very popular. As you, um, if you go up on the CSU website, there's lots of management subjects in there, like IT risk management, <coughs> which are important, um, obviously, if you're going to do security management. These are both, you know, hands-on um, for practitioners in these two areas. Course structure, let's look at the, um, um, both, of the, both of the masters um, are 12 subjects uh, and we have three study sessions. We don't call them semesters because there's three of them per year. And if you do the math there, which is your first test to get into the masters, um, you've got um, uh, a recommended duration for, of two years because the recommended study load for working full-time professionals who are studying part-time working during the day and studying which are all of the P 
people in these courses are, um, is two subjects per session, so two years. Realistically, on average, about two and a half. We've had people finish in a year, especially when they get credit. I'll talk about credit later on. Uh, and we've had one person, uh, 10 years, not really supposed to be allowed to go on for that long, but they finally got around to graduating in 10 years. But if you uh, you want to do uh, uh, make allowances there, particularly if you're not getting credit about two and a half years, you would expect. But let's have a look at the two masters now. And I'll just bring out a topic down the bottom. When you're looking, and you should be, I mean, this is a big decision, looking around at which uni you should study with. One of the things I strongly suggest you have a look at is how many of the subjects are on topic. What I mean by that is, are they about cybersecurity or are they, quite frankly, fillers? Um, you might see three or four, it's very common, uh, very strong cybersecurity topics. And then there's a whole lot of topics on programming, networking, a whole range of other things, which are all type of relevant, but not really. Uh, you want to move into the industry, uh, you want to be strong in all the areas and, and uh, that's an awful lot of areas in cybersecurity and you want to have them on your resume as well. So one of the things about ours, because we've got such a strong suite of cybersecurity at Charles Sturt, it's easily our biggest, you'll see later on, we're easily the biggest IT education provider, but um, the biggest of all of our areas within all the different areas of IT is um, cybersecurity. Um, and that allows us, that gives us a whole suite of cyber security subjects. So you look through them. Um, I mean, there's, there's a couple in, in, in electives, topics in IT ethics, by the way, very good subject, and professional communications, but they're elective. They're not, you don't have to do those subjects. Um, what you can do here is you can do all 12 subjects. Uh, if you pick, say, those first four as your electives that you would like to do, and here's your core over here. They are all focused on cybersecurity. Extremely important, as I said, and something you should look at when you're looking at different courses. Um, the only one you might say down the bottom, uh, ITC 571, Emerging Technologies. Um, it is a, a, a mini research topic. We do it as you, it's called a capstone. You do it right at the end. It's to help you prepare maybe to do some research. Excuse me, I'll just have a drink. Um, but you would be doing in that, when you do your mini research, you'll be definitely studying cybersecurity. So that is also a cybersecurity, but um, the rest are very hands-on cybersecurity subjects. Okay, um, and we'll have a look at a couple of the subjects, not all of them, in a bit more depth in a minute. But let's have a look at the second of the masters. Okay, you'll see some of those subjects over, over here in electives that were from the other group. Um, and you'll even in your uh, in your core subjects, there's some some uh, ones from the cyber security. So these are very hands-on cyber security, but you'll also see subjects from policing, investigation principles, multi-agency investigation, we'll look at that in a minute. So there's a combination here. The idea is that your career, the career area you'd like to move into is either um, into law enforcement agencies like we talked about or you're in policing and uh, you want to develop your skills up further and move into cyber so there's a combination but again all the subjects are on topic as to what you want to do have a look at a couple of example subjects um, ITC 593 is one of the subjects up there it's core in the um, the first and I think the second both the masters and the question always people say well what hey, you know, what's the exam going to be like? Or how? Or what's the assessment? Well, all the subjects are assessed differently depending on what's most appropriate. The lecturer uh, generally decide with the course committee. Uh, this one happens to have four assessments, a bit unusual, but only three is the more norm. But it's pretty standard. Uh, a lot of them have this. You'll have a, a multiple choice assessment at the beginning. This is early in the semester or the session maybe week four of a 15 week session. And it's really just a quick catch up. You do it online from home uh, and it will find out how you're going, particularly, uh, we particularly want to chase up people who, who either failed or um, do very badly or, or don't attempt it because it's a, a sign that they're falling behind. So, and then further on in the session, you do uh, something a bit more meaty, uh, decryption. 
assessment there. Um, and then number three is a more hands-on applied, what we call demonstrate factual knowledge and understanding of, of state-of-the-art network security. And then finally, we do have an exam. We don't have exams in all of them. Uh, you would go to an exam centre, or increasingly, we're doing sit-at-home e exams in a lot of the subjects now. But uh, um, if it's an exam centre, it's written at home. You do it on your computer. <coughs> Oops. Excuse me. Uh, let's have a look at another one. This this is what we call an industry-based exam. That's delivered. A uh, number of the subjects in the masters are like this, are delivered by industry-based lecturers, casuals, as we call them. Um, and the second thing that's different about it, it's based on uh, industry certification. I mean, in accounting, you've got things like the CPA. Um, we had the equivalent in IT, <coughs> and we have it in cybersecurity. Um, great thing to have on your resume, apart from your masters. Um, so we do a double thing with this and a number of other subjects are the same. We, firstly, we get you, uh, you get an in-depth knowledge of how to scan, test, hack and secure a computer system. I mean, you can't secure it if you don't know what the hackers are going to do. And at the same time, we're actually preparing you for an industry certification exam with the EC Council. It's one of the better known certifications around the world. It's up to you whether you go and do the actual exam. I strongly suggest you do, especially this one. Um, but we don't um, we don't make you sit it as part of it. We have an exam that's somewhat similar, but um, much more hands-on, so to speak. Uh, so that's an industry-based subject. And it's one of the other things that makes these courses unique. And finally, one from remember the second masters has got uh, uh, from policing. This is a 16 point, so it's a double subject. And as you'd imagine, um, there's quite quite a lot in it. Uh, that's a big syllabus to cover, but you've got a double subject there. So you'd be studying that over a period of uh, eight months, um, two sessions. But you see the stuff there, as I mentioned, it, it, one of the career paths is um, you want to go into one of the um, agencies the multitude of uh, government agencies, particularly that we've got handling cyber security now, um, that would be a great subject. Okay. Why study distance ed at Charles Sturt? Well, they're easily the market leader in distance education, dominate the the area and have done for many years. Uh, we're a regional university based at Wagga, Bathurst, Goldburn, uh, I think it's nine, ten campuses now, but not too many people from Sydney and Melbourne are available, especially in IT, where it's pretty busy um, to be able to come out and sit in classes. So we got into DE early and um, we, do, we think we do a fantastic job and I think the numbers show that uh, easily the largest distance ed uni. Why would you study in IT? At Charles Sturt, well, we dominate that sphere as well and have done since about 2009. We hit market leadership. These are the figures from the, um, the government figures from the higher ed stats. Um, we're easily the largest number um, of IT postgraduate, which is what these courses are. Numbers there show about 650, uh, actually just over a thousand. There's um, the IT management don't show in there. And of those, cybersecurity these days would probably be a third. So. Another 300, 350 students uh, studying cyber security. Quite a few research, uh, researching cyber security now as well. And law enforcement, um, Charles Sturt University are huge in this area, easily the largest in Australia and one of the world's largest in terms of uh, uh, policing and law enforcement. And I added this one, I don't know, but why study cyber security? I mean, you must have been under a rock somewhere if you don't know how the incredible growth, I've never seen growth like this in the industry since the dot-com boom, us, whatever you want to call it, the boom, where people were just being grabbed from wherever. Um, but some, some interesting quotes, quotes up there, the Australian Minister for Higher Education um, Training and Research says we need 11,000 cyber security roles, Bill. From the USA, 
a report from the recruitment uh, people over there. Uh, they've seen 49% of cybersecurity professionals solicited for jobs uh, at least once a week. Incredible. I mean, again, we haven't seen this since the, the two, year 2000, where there's just mad flurry of uh, of jobs, and and it just, in my opinion, just we're on the cusp of it's just about to really take off. But um, if you you want to be interested in this area, and obviously you are, I, I strongly suggest you do your research. And one of the, there's an excellent report from the Australian Computer Society. If you Google this, cybersecurity threats, challenges, and opportunities. And um, the threat is huge. Is where the hell are we going to find these people? Uh, the opportunity, obviously, is if you happen to be in the industry already, or, or you've got into a um, fantastic reporter. I strongly suggest you have a look at it. Okay, if you if you study with us, how much work is it going to be? Well, obviously, it depends on experience level. If you've got a, a strong cyber security background already, and some of our students do, that might be a network administrator that's got right into security. Um, or as we had one person in New South Wales policing, but it's just loved security and, and done a lot of um, home study in it. It's going to be a lot easier for you. <coughs> um, but the guideline is six to 12 hours per subject per week. If you've got lots of experience, six or less. If you don't have much experience, um, you're certainly going to be looking at 10 to 12. Um, remember I said the recommended loads, two subjects per week, so maybe 20 hours a week, um, a couple of nights a week, and a, a day on the weekend occasionally. Um, seems to work for a lot of people, or a day on the weekend uh, regularly, half day. Um, so it's not, I mean, it's not trivial. There's, that's why they're uh, so highly regarded. Is um, it's a bit of work but for a couple of half, two and a half years. Well, I'd say it's the hardest part about it is when you start. You get into your study mode after that, and we have so many graduates. You, you talk to them at graduation, and um, they, they immediately want to ask you about what they're going to do next. And you see the apartment, and we're going, what? You know, but, but they've got into the study mode. They're enjoying it. They're enjoying the learning. And uh, um, we've had people do three, four masters, and then go into the doctorates. But if that all gets too much for you, and I'm sure you will at different times because you have work and um, social life as well, um, we, we're definitely okay to drop back to one subject or take leave. You've got a, in theory, a maximum of four years to complete your masters. Um, but as I said, with extenuating circumstances, uh, you can go uh, longer than that. Uh, just a point there, some unis, you've got to write a whole case and why, what, not, uh, just send us an email before uh, census date, which is four weeks into the subject and say, hey, I need to drop back, um, um, work, uh, and that'll be fine. It happen, happens all the time. How much is it going to cost? Thirty-two fifty per subject or thirty-three fifty for overseas? Um, it's due at the beginning of each study session. Um, if it's in line with your career aspirations, in other words, you're working in network administration and you want to move up to cybersecurity, it's tax deductible. <coughs> we have a few people come back and say their accounts told them there wasn't. Well, the accounts are wrong. Um, they've got confused with undergraduate hex funded positions, which are not tax deductible. But these are, this is a full fee uh, postgraduate study. It is definitely tax deductible, providing it is applicable to your career. In other words, what the ATO wants to hear is that you're using this to earn more money and pay them more taxes, of course. So, um, includes everything, um, exams, study guides, everything. Uh, in fact, we tell you not to buy any or get anything else. You should be busy enough as it is. And I mentioned census. Don't forget that. Um, you get an email warning you about it. Each study session that you're doing, you'll get an email saying, look, census is coming up. If you need to pull out, do so now, and you won't have to pay. But if you go past census, you will have to pay. Fee help. Uh, every, if you're an Australian citizen, uh, everyone uses them. Why wouldn't you? I mean, government study loan, the way that works is on your application, they say, how do you want to pay for it? You say, I want to use fee help, and then the government pays the uni. It's interest free, it covers all your cost. Um, again, we've had people come back with confusion here. This is 
There is no loan fee with this undergraduate. There's a 20, which I think is not very harsh, but 25% loan fee. There isn't, doesn't apply definitely with these. And your repayments, this has probably gone up a bit, but they begin at approximately um, 50K, 4% up, so it comes out of your pay. Admissions, what's it take to get in? Well, normally to do a master's degree, you would need a bachelor's degree. But lo and hold, particularly in IT, we get a lot of very senior people applying who don't have a bachelor's degree. When we first started these courses, uni, the uni was going, well, that can't be possible. Well, in fact, it is. They, they've, done, they've been successful. They come back. So we have a pathway for industry experience in both of the masters. If you've got industry experience, and for one reason or another, you either never started or finished your bachelor's degree, there's a pathway in for you. Um, Paul Park, uh, for the IT, the first one, three years. Uh, for the policing one, five years of, uh, of industry experience. Um, and we have a pathway to get into that. Um, it's what's called a graduate certificate. Just do the first four subjects. And providing you pass those, you go into your masters. But the good news is you get credit for all of the ones you've already done. So it's no extra work. You actually get two qualifications. It's a fantastic setup, really. Um, if you want to do that, yeah, you just go. Um, that's the graduate certificate, as I said, the first four subjects. Um, that's for the Master of Cybersecurity, particularly. Um, and then um, you get your graduate certificate and you continue on if, if that's what you want to do and do your master's. And you get full credit for what you've already done. Have we mentioned credit. Um, can you get credit? Yes, credit is definitely available. For the IT subjects, remember I like the the example one we looked at the um, CHFI, Certified Hacking Forensic Investigator subject. If you've already got that certification, I'm not going to make you study it all again. It'll probably be a bit of a menace in the class anyway. Um, what we do there is give you credit for it. So providing it's within the last 10 years, you can get credit, and lots of people do. Previous academic studies at a postgraduate level. So if you have a look at one of the subjects, say, aha, I studied something like that another or even a child student and it looks very similar 70 percent match um, we give you credit for that and a new way for the IT particularly is we run a series of free short courses a bit of a taster to what it's like studying at CSU you can go and do three of those and pass the, the multi-choice exam at the end of only four or five weeks each and um, we would give you a credit only one credit though uh, for one of your elective subjects so that's three ways the maximum credit, as with all universities, as far as I'm aware, uh, you can only get 50%. So six of the 12 subjects is the maximum you can get, but we do get people to do that, especially when they've got lots of industry certifications. If you're not sure, you just want to find out, you want to find out how much credit, you want to find out whether you're going to get in. Remember we mentioned about that? Um, we have a form up on the IT Masters website. Am I eligible? Take you five minutes, fill it out. And Neil, I mentioned earlier, we'll come back. He's an expert on credit, industry certifications and whatnot. He'll come back uh, and say, yeah, no, yes, you should get in. Uh, and this is how many credits we, and we can confirm that before you actually enroll when you go down that path. Um, when can you start? Well, there's three sessions per year, so there's three times you can start. But the one that's coming up is end of January. Um, so, but you need to get a wrap on there if you're interested in that intake. Um, please go up, you don't have to have your full application, but just go up on the CSU website and fill out the online application uh, to get your process started. But you, quite frankly, you need to do that in the next week. Uh, you, you can put your supporting documentation in later on. In other words, if you've got a bachelor's, you need to put some proof in about that. But, um, um, you can actually get your application underway and you've got your place reserved just by filling that out. Um, lots of you'll be there. I know I've talked to many of you and you talk to them five years later. I'll say, yeah, I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. I'll, I'll say the same thing to all of you. If you never start, you'll never finish. Um, we've got lots of people um, who are partially finished their masters getting, uh, getting new uh, other positions. So the sooner you start, the sooner you can start looking for them. You don't have to wait until you actually finish, but we've got 
If I haven't convinced you, there's a couple of other intakes there. Um, just to finally, you want to talk to your partner quite often the case to say, well, what are we going to get out of this degree if I study it? Um, what's the impact on the bottom line? This is data from the Australian census, the latest Australian census. We finally got the data uh, after all the step ups with the, the online form and whatnot. Um, pretty rigid did I mean, you don't put, put something in your census and given it's cross reference with other government uh, agencies like the ATO and they ask you how much you're earning, and they do, um, and uh, you tend to put the right things in. And from that, we can find out um, how much, say, a programmer is earning with no uni qualifications and how much they're earning with a uni qualification. The one we're interested in here is security. So there's a whole group of them that we put together there, uh, including security. And it, again, quite a difference um, in terms of what they're in, who knows why? I mean, there's, there's all sorts of possible reasons there, but it's definitely there. And over a 25 year, you'd be talking about a difference of 213,000, which may be one of the best investments, apart from your first house, maybe, that you'd ever make uh, in terms of return, because it doesn't date. It's always going to be on your resume. I looked up cybersecurity, uh, and there's, as you can probably imagine, you know, uh, this is mainly network admins, because it's um, system admin, because there's lots of those, but if you pull security out, their average wage is 111,000. But um, it's up 31% huge rise since 2011. Now that's a direct result of shortage of supplies. You know, employment is all about um, supply and demand. If, if there's not enough people out there, well, suddenly you can ask all sorts of interesting uh, things about your wages and conditions. and. As I said, I think we're just at the cusp of this week. It's going to be a fantastic career if you've got the ability uh, going forward and you'll be in a, in a very good place at interview in terms of discussing your wage package. Okay, um, we'll top of round it up there. Um, just start, finish up with what are you going to get out of it? Well, you'll get a, you'll get a, a fully accredited master's degree. You'll be prepped for a range of cyber security industry certification. Remember those subjects? They're in both of the masters. So, um, and as I said, a great uh, additional differentiator on your resume is um, you would do those and be paired for them as you, and we, we cover all the mainstream ones uh, on the way through. And plus, I attempted a bit of a joke here, um, you get 25% discount on Charles Sturt University's wonderful range of wine. So, um, so you could drink it on the way through and, and um, once you're an alumni, you get, um, you get your discount. Uh, but I'd love to see you in a few years time at graduation and we'll, uh, we, we'll share a CSU wine with you. Okay, thanks for attending. Um, if you've got any other questions apart from keep typing them online and uh, I hope Neil's getting some really, really difficult questions there. Um, if you want to find out more about the Master of Cybersecurity, just you can go to direct to CSU, but contractor, we've got people who have got in-depth knowledge of this because that's all we cover. So um, I'd suggest you either call or email IT Masters. And the Master of Cyber Studies and Investigations, go to the CSU Contact Centre again, fantastic people there. But if you've got questions, particularly if, for instance, you're coming from outside the industry or even if you're in it, I'd suggest you go direct to John Darlings. He's the course director for policing courses. He's got an in-depth knowledge of all the courses and, and the industry for that matter. So um, John's happy to take emails from you. Um, so definitely email him directly. Okay, uh, thanks for listening. I'll leave this open so you can continue to ask questions. Um, leave it open Holly for 15 minutes, maybe, or until we stop getting questions. Thanks again and good luck with your studies, no matter what you end up doing.